everybody, it's the walker. So what are we doing today? Well, we're on another conditioning hike. It's a nice, nice, nice late, even later in the afternoon, spring day. The gnats are out, the mosquitoes are out, the black flies are out, they're all out. It's a, hey, it's the season, you know? And I figured we'd talk about a flashlight. Well, one, I love flashlights. And the flashlight we'll talk about, Phoenix E41. Look at this thing. Yeah. Now there's a little bit of history on this flashlight. Well, at least a little personal history. Now, back in the day, some years ago, there was a flashlight that Phoenix put out. It was called, I believe it was the TK40. Oh man, I want a TK40 bad. I mean, really, really, really bad. You know, oh, God, I want it. And the reason I wanted it was it used AA batteries, eight of them. And it got like 630 lumens, which some years ago, that was amazing. This sucker can put out a thousand. And it was doing it with AA batteries. Basically, all the power of a lithium ion 18650 battery, but with double A's. And a lot of people, they're a bit shy around the lithium ion batteries. They heard rumors of explosions, um, over discharging, uh, special chargers. It's not such a big deal. But a lot of people are more comfortable with standard alkalines, um, lithium primary double A's, uh, lith um, like NIMH rechargeables, like any loops. They're more comfortable and they have more gear that use those chemistries. Also, you can simply go into a gas station and buy some alkaline batteries in case things go bad. So, but you know, there's a problem. The problem was is that the TK40 took eight AA batteries. Eh, that's a lot of them. And I always carry backup batteries when I take a flashlight. So I'm going be carrying 16 batteries. And also it was like 150 bucks. Man, 150 bucks. I, I didn't have 150 bucks. Wow. <laughs> this is cheaper. Um, and I got this actually on sale about a year ago. So, hey, hey. So here's what we'll do. We'll get to the top of this mountain. And then we'll... we'll um, I guess we'll discuss this flashlight. And also I think what we'll do is I will show you an actual field use on this same mountain too, at night. Um, because this is, as always, it's a field use review. You know, that's just, that's just the way it is with me. All right, so uh, hang on, we'll get to the top, then we'll talk a little bit more about this awesome, awesome flashlight. And now on to review of the Phoenix E41 flashlight. First thing, the sheath, I'm not really a fan. I found it um, a little bit too difficult when I'm using it, taking it in that one-handed to get it to go back into the sheath. Um, it did protect the light in my pack. It does keep the light on my belt. But honestly, I'm just not a fan of it. That's just me. Uh, take a look at the light. It's your typical um, Phoenix quality. Has a nice, um, looks like some kind of a, a retaining ring there. I don't know what it's made of. Mainly, main, It could be uh, stainless steel, it could be aluminum. I'm not sure. But it looks like a really quality thing. Uh, second thing is the, the um, reflector looks it looks really wide because it's the light itself is not that long but the reflector looks really wide but it seems a little bit on the shallow side and as a result the beam is this big circle like like a woods domination circle but the reflector is still some good reflector there so it produces a lot of throw i mean it lights up the entire woods um i can see everything of course you know that's to be expected given the uh, just the size of every the reflector there. You know, still I was surprised at the flooding nature of the beam. 
we'll take a look at the user interface. One click turns it on, goes through the mode. So one click, we're on low, medium, high, back to low, click and hold, turbo. There we go. Um, that turbo mode is all a thousand lumens. I will put up all the run times and I will put up the uh, lumens. But now it has a memory mode. I'll show you that. We're going to medium, click and hold. It's gone off, click and hold, and we're back on medium. So it has a memory mode. Now it can go to turbo from any mode. You basically press and hold. Boom! Turbo! Then you release. Um, boy, these gnats are really getting angry at me out here. Also, another thing too, you notice there's no rain. I set up this poncho because it was, it was starting to sprinkle and as soon as I did, sun came out. That's the magical powers of ponchos. All right. Now, let's see I go from off. I want to go to turbo. Press and hold. Boom! Off. So you can see it'll jump up. Basically, it goes from off to the previous mode left on, then the turbo, then back to off again. There's one little thing I, I, I wish they didn't do. I'll show you. Okay, we're on, the, we're on the low mode. When I go to activate turbo or press and hold, it goes off, then boom, the turbo. Hey, that's cool. And then when I release, it goes back to low. But I wish it didn't go off and then the turbo. I wish it simply went to low, to turbo, then when I release the button, back down to low. I don't know what that, I, I don't know why they did that, but they did. You know, what can I do? Um, so another thing too is people may have noticed, as soon as I release the button, turbo's done, it's done. So it doesn't have the, uh, the turbo mode is a burst mode meant to like, it's not Squatch type thing, you know? It's not meant to um, be sustained. So, and a lot of people, they see the light and it's rated for like 900 lumens, or th actually it's 1,000 lumens. And they don't understand that they're not getting a 1,000 lumen solid running mode, but a, a burst mode that only lasts as long as you hold the button, and even then, for only so long. I think they do that to protect the light from overheating, but, you know, People have to understand that before you buy it. So if you want a light that has a thousand lumen solid mode that runs a thousand lumens regulated till the battery runs down, this might not be for you. The, now I'll show you one other, one other thing, which is kind of a little bit of a negative. Okay, we're on the low mode. Twist, 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 twist. You probably figured it out by now. Twist, 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 twist. There's no real lockout. And that's, that's a bit of a negative for me because I'm a big believer in lockout. But there's a flip side to that. <clears throat> All right, let me show you. Okay, click, click. It's not turning on. Click and hold. There we go. So it takes a, a, a very deliberately long click and hold to turn the light on. Um, some people may not like that. I do like that. And the reason why I like that is it because it helps mitigate the bump and turn on in my pack. And also the memory mode in some ways would help mitigate that too. So memory mode means it's going to turn on to the next mode that it was left on. And I would choose low if it was in my pack because if it turned on, I'd rather have it on the low mode turned on than like the high mode. And it's just not going to it has never turned on in my pack, and I think the reason is it takes a very deliberate pressure for a deliberate length of time. So in that way, the UI is anti-accidental activation, but still, I would much prefer if it had a lockout. Still, as I said, there's a flip side, and I'm showing it to you. The UI's intrinsic properties, and especially when you put it in the sheath, which is okay for this part. I don't, it's not as good on my belt, but worked in my pack. It doesn't seem to, the light doesn't seem to activate on. And if you notice, it's, there's a, it's in like a little valley there where the, the button's kind of like in a recessed area. That aids in it in anti accidental activation. Anti accidental activation. That's the words I'm looking for. The gist is hasn't turned on in my pack yet, despite the fact that it doesn't have a automated lockout. 
actually not automated, twisty lockout. Some lights actually do have an automated lockout where you can set the light to be locked out, but I prefer it is the twisty lockout. Let me show you the batteries. Okay, the batteries are held in just in the flashlight itself with no carrier. One of the downside of the TK40, which was my dream light, is although I never got it, um, 150 bucks. They never had 150 bucks for that. Was it took eight AA batteries, but they needed to go in a battery carrier, and and a lot of lights, at least from the time that took multiple. Um, double A batteries, they did so with a carrier and the carrier was always a flimsy plastic thing and I never trusted it that it wouldn't break or I wouldn't lose the carrier. Here the batteries are just going right back into the light and they have it clearly labeled. Even I'm gonna get this right. Negative. Positive. It's like really easy. Positive and negative. So it's labeled. Now here's a weird thing. There's a rod right here. Take a look. This whole the whole contacts just move. And I was really surprised at that. I don't know why um, Phoenix did that, but they did. There must be a reason for it. However, so what that basically means is that it's got to go into this little hole right here. That little rod has got to go into this hole. And I thought it would be trouble in the field, but watch. It's no trouble at all. It really is easy. However, I think I've never had to. I'll check one thing first. Wouldn't that have been embarrassing after all that talk that if I didn't do that right? Um, I've never had to actually reload this battery, this uh, the flashlight with batteries in a dark situation where I'm using it, it runs out of battery power because it has such long run times. But if I did, these gnats are really taking advantage of me. <laughs> but if I did, I feel that um, it would be difficult to do so in the dark. Like I've, I, I've tried it in a dark room, but that's not the same thing as field conditions. So I feel in the dark, it wouldn't be nearly as easy as doing a one times AA or one times, um, CR123 light where you just drop it in and twist it and you're gone. Because four batteries and you've got that little rod that's got to fit right into that hole there. And I always carry extra batteries. So I'm carrying, when I'm taking this light, I'm carrying eight batteries with me, four in and I have four outside. I, I just cannot stand the idea of having a flashlight without extra batteries. So that's a lot of weight to consider too. I'll put up the run times, the weights and the lumens. Uh, but it's a heavy when you add up all the batteries. It's heavy. Therefore this light goes at me on Over uh, on short like overnight adventures or uh, Night hikes and things of that nature, but they don't go with it. I don't take this light with me for 30 miles 40 miles 50 mile type hikes. It's just too much extra weight at least for me anyways Okay, here's what we'll do. We'll go on the field testing part of this review in which case I will test the um Things such as the uh, water resistance. I believe it's rated to two meters for 30 minutes. I don't test it that long because I don't. I'm not rated for two meters or 30 minutes. But we do test. We do get a dunk test and we test it out to see how it actually operates in real field conditions. This mountain, actually, uh, rock climbing the whole nine yards. So you can take a look at the beam and how have things worked out in the actual field use because this is a field use review. All right, so we'll go on to the field use part of the review right now. Okay, we're out uh, on an actual hike using the uh, Phoenix E41. There we are. That is the low setting. The medium. It's doing a pretty good job, actually. It's got an incredibly floody beam. High. Man, look at that. That's nice. It goes back down to low. Very simple UI. Very simple. Click to hold, turn off. Click to hold, turn on. Click through the modes. One really cool thing about this is that it has a memory mode. 
So let's go to medium, click and hold off, click and hold back on, you're on medium mode. Press and hold, turbo, whoa, that's bright, that's really bright. Trail marker, release it, drops back down to medium. Let's try click and hold off, click and hold, medium, bam, right the turbo, release it, goes back to off, which was the last mode it was on. Again, it's off, click and hold, jumps to last mode, Boom, release, back down. That's part of the memory mode. I'll show you. It's on low, click and hold off. Now if I want to jump right to turbo, I basically just click, aka press and hold, low, high. Then when I release, off. Now if I start on low, it's now starting on low, press and hold, turbo, release, Last mode, off. A very simple UI. Um, one of the things I like about this light, it is time for the traditional dunk test. Uh, this flashlight is rated for two meters, 30 minutes. I don't really need to be putting it down for two meters and 30 minutes, but there we go. That'll do. Leave that for a while. And I think that's enough time. There we go. Up you go. So how you looking? I don't see any water in there. So... We'll take a look at this later. I don't see any water penetration of the flashlight in any way. So it would appear that it has passed the water test. Actually, if I find any water in this flashlight, I'll of course let you know. But Good job, Phoenix, on that one. You passed the... Uh... Now, this is the type of dunk test that's real world. I'm not going two meters down for 30 minutes. But I could easily drop my flashlight in a pool of water like that when trying to get some water during the hike. So, that's a reasonable test. Let's continue with the hike. This is the uh, rock scampering part of the test. I put my hiking poles inside of my pack. And of course the uh, this is the rock scampering part of the test. I put my um, hiking poles inside my pack. Ordinarily, in no way would I recommend um, scampering down rocks with a flashlight. And the reason is, you really want to have three points of contact, especially at night, actually all the time. But, you know, I got to test this, I got to see how this gear item will perform, if I should ever need it. My headlamp died. That's never happened. I never had my headlamp die and I had to use this flashlight. I mostly use this flashlight to spotlight things outside of the range of my headlamp. But... If it ever did die, hold on a second here. There we go. If it ever did die, I would need the light to um, find my way back, obviously, and I may have to go down stuff like this. Always remember, though, three points of contact are key. Absolutely crucial. So we are going to take this slow. Very slow. Oh. Really slow. See, we in high here. Okay. Very carefully here. Oh, look at this. A lighter. Uh, it's empty. I can't um, 
I can't be messing around picking up trash right now. Okay. I mean, it's not um, the world's biggest mountain, but um, you know, 20 feet or 200 feet, falls a fall. All right. There we are. Nice wide beam. Very nice wide. Excellent beam for this kind of work. It's covering a big swath. I want to be really careful doing this because this is a sheer drop right here. Nice. And then it would drop right back down. There's where that dropping right back down to the last mode I left it on, like if I want to see a path, turbo, and drops right back down. But I don't like that little dark flash there where it goes totally off when you uh, select turbo. I mean, it's not the end of the world though. All right, be careful here. And there we go. There we go. We made it. Excellent, excellent. Look at that. Very rocky, very rocky. But you know, like this bright, I could see if it was if I was going up, I could see a good path to go up. Not a problem. Continue on with the hike. And that's about the end of the hike. I see the truck, the trailhead. Quick five miles. There we go. There we are. And that also concludes the review of the Phoenix flashlight. Did a great job. There we go. And as always, thank you very much for watching.